So welcome back to another episode. And today I wanted to take a look at some early Neo Geo games, Ninja Combat and Cyberlip. Now I did a review on Fatal Fury and I was saying how I looked over at this Neo Geo cabinet and there was brand new games over there. The same for these. These games, I walked in one day and they were just up and running and I'm like, what the hell are these? So I used to play these all the time in the arcades and I didn't pick up my own copies till years later. And it was really funny. I opened Cyberlip for the review and I couldn't believe that my receipt was still in here. And it's from 1998 when I picked this up. I, I was like, oh my God, I picked this up in 1998 and it was only $25 when I picked it up. I picked it up used, obviously. Cyberlip was released in 1990. And as you can see on the cover, 50 megs, huge. So you've been asked by the president to destroy the evil sentient computer Cyberlip. And this all takes place on a space colony. So it's a side-scrolling action run and gun game. A lot like many before it. A lot like Contra, in fact. So it's fairly typical. You can run, shoot, jump, hang from ledges, go into buildings, and reload your weapons. Reloading magazine completed. One thing I do like about Cyberlip is that it copies heavily from some old movies that I absolutely adore, like Terminator and Alien. Like when you're running through this like abandoned colony, you're fighting all these Terminators and blasting them and shooting off their skins and they're falling down in their exoskeletons. I always love that. Another big deal in this game, no pun intended, was the graphics. And I'm talking specifically about the boss characters. The boss characters were huge and that, when you were in an arcade back then and you saw humongous characters like that, that was a huge deal. It really, really was. It was showing you what you could not get at home. And the very first bio-organic boss character that you fight, that was used in so many advertisements, and that was one of the first images that I ever saw for Cyberlip, and I was like, oh my god, look at that thing. It looks so incredible. But that ended up in a very, very controversial ad. A kind of advertisement you would never see now with this scantily class girl saying, oh my god, he could, you know, he never could keep his hands off me. And he's sitting there, you know, the boyfriend's sitting there playing Cyberlip and doesn't give a crap. And it's kind of phallic in a way as well. You know, obviously that would never happen in reality. Johnny, I need you. I want you. What? I don't have time for you! I'm playing Dynamite Ducks! <laughs> ducks! It's all about ducks! ducks. The one thing that I will say about Cyberlip that makes the game very special in my mind is that the game is fairly average. It really, really is. But it has such a cool twist ending, and this ending really makes the game. As I said, the president asked you to destroy the evil computer, the sentient computer, Cyberlip. So at the end of the game, you defeat Cyberlip, you destroy it, but it's trying to tell you something, that it was programmed badly by somebody else. And then all of a sudden, the president comes on the screen and he thanks you for destroying the defense network for the entire colony. And it's kind of revealed at that point that he is an alien, a part of a huge alien race that is coming to destroy this colony and take over mankind. And it's one of those things you're like, oh my God, I helped make this happen. It sounds so stupid and it kind of is, but at the time it was really, Cool, I was like, wow, that's like a Twilight Zone twist ending and I thought it was, that kind of made the game for me. That made Cyberlip cool. Now our next game is Ninja Combat. And let me just say this, this game gets shit on so much. I, and I get it, I really do understand. It's got short levels as well, clunky controls, but I gotta say some cool things about it. I gotta say, at the time, this game was really fun and beautiful looking. It was so awesome back in the day just to spend a few bucks and finish this game. It did exactly what it needed to do. Take your quarters and look pretty. This was also a two player game. You played as two ninja brothers, one in blue, one in red, and you went through side scrolling action levels and you used shurikens and different weapons, katanas, and uh, you had special attacks that would also drain your energy if you use those and you could pick up two extra characters on your way to defeating the ninja tower the music for the most part is pretty forgettable and usually with most games I have a lot of cool things to say about the music but honestly it was so in the background it never really stood out to me
and some hilariously funny voice acting. Not for booby traps inside. If I remember right, there's an elevator. And it's got a really fucking cool last boss. In conclusion, I like these games. They're nostalgic as fuck. They're from a different era, a different time. A time when the Neo Geo was king, and it got to be king on the pillars of fun games like these. These are early Neo Geo games for sure, but they really showed what the system could do in the beginning. They were showing huge characters, uh, beautiful looking levels, really nice pixel art. It was looking fantastic. Stuff, as they say, that you couldn't get on home consoles. Now, I, graphically, I think the Super Nintendo could have done a few of these a little bit later on. I'm not saying that, but I think the only negative that I can really think about is if I was, you know, at that time able to afford Neo Geo games when they were 250 to 300 dollars and I brought home these two games and I finished them both in 20 minutes there's really no replay value so it really would suck for that but for me to be able to pick up each one for 20 to 25 dollars years later it's pretty good and they do remind me of my childhood playing them in the arcades and that's what these are they're as i say nostalgic games from a different time a different era so anyways guys until next time goodbye joe